Hello everyone and welcome to another devlog video for Homegrown and Happy New Year! It's the 7th of January today when I'm filming this so that means it's now officially been three years since I started this project and I do remember that originally I said it would take less than a year I was a little bit wrong but we are now genuinely getting close to release if I just quickly show you the state of things in Trello so I'm currently finishing up the town features just two more updates to go there. Firstly, I want to make some improvements to the shops. That's going to be in this video. And then next time, I'm going to be revisiting the farmer's market feature. And then after that, I'll be done with the town and I'll be moving my focus back to the farm area where I'm going to be implementing the final few gameplay features that I want to get into the game before release. So we are now definitely approaching the home straight. Before I get too ahead of myself though, as I said, this week I'm going to be working on the shops. I've got a few new features that I'd like to add to them, plus I'd like to improve their UI a bit. So I've just been doing the planning for that. And now this morning, I'm gonna get into some programming. So I spent the last couple of days working on the back end for the shops, implementing some of the new features that I've got planned. The main one that I had to do was adding categories to the shops. So when I create a shop, I can now add various categories to it. And then the items can either get automatically put into these categories or in the item info file, I can now specify which category I want that item to be in. I also set up a very simple unlocking system so that when you start the game, some of the items are locked and then uh, it's a very simple system at the moment. And then when you meet certain requirements, those items get unlocked. So backend's done now, and I now need to move on to redesigning the shop UI. So here's the new design that I've just quickly put together. It's not that different from the current design. This is how it currently looks in the game. Um, so I haven't made any huge changes. The main things are these tabs on the side. That's how you're going to choose the category. Obviously they're gonna have icons and not splodges in them. I also made a very quick design for a locked item. And then I added this background panel. I've always felt that there wasn't enough contrast between the shop items and the background. So I added this, this panel here. I'm also going to need that for the, for the scroll bar. Um, let me know what you think of all of this. And also, I've been considering I could add some sort of graphic like this to make it look more shop-like. I'm not sure. Let me know what you think. Um, first up, I'm going to implement it without anyway, and then I can always add it in afterwards. But it's the end of the day today, so I'm going to start the implementation tomorrow. It is 20 past nine. It's a lovely sunny morning today. I've got myself a cup of tea, just had some breakfast, and today I'm going to be getting into the code and implementing this design into the shop UI. So to start off, I've been implementing the category tabs in the shop. And I just want to give you a very quick overview of the code that I've been writing to give you an idea of how I implement UI using my engine. So I started off by implementing a single tab, which is basically just a toggle button, can turn it on or off, and it has the icon of the category on it. So to create this, I first made the textures for the tab, which are these two textures here. Most of the textures that I use for my UI are just white, and then the colors get applied to them in the code, that just makes it very easy to change the colors. So here's the code for the tab UI. It extends the toggleable UI class, which is my class for a toggle button, handles all of the toggle button functionality. So in this class, I really just have to set up the visuals for the tab. Uh, the tab UI takes in the category that it should represent. And then here it initializes those two textures, adds those uh, or applies the colors to them and then adds the categories icon onto the tab. And then this method here is called whenever the state of the button changes. And in here, I just change the color of the icon and the tab 
accordingly. After that, I created another UI, which is the tab group UI. This displays all of the categories that are available in a shop and allows you to select one and it makes sure that only one is selected at any one time. So here's the code for the tab group UI. This takes in a list of all of the categories that are available in the shop. And then for each category, it creates one tab and positions them one after the other. Also, when it creates a tab, it adds it to this toggle group, which is another class that I've got in my engine. And this just makes sure that only one button is on at any given time. And then this class also provides some listener functionality so that you can listen for category changes. So you can give it a listener and that will get notified whenever the category changes. So then in the shop UI, I was able to use that to add the categories to the shop. So I created a tab group UI, gave it the categories in this current shop and uh, just positioned those tabs on the left of the shop UI. And then in here, I'm adding the functionality. So I'm using that listener functionality to listen for a category change. And when there's a new category, I just tell the contents panel to only display the items that are in that category. So here in the game, we can see it all in action now, the category tabs working as expected. Obviously this will make a bit more sense when there are more items in the game. And I could probably do with some better icons for these categories, but all in all, job done. I've just been doing some general tidying up of the items panel in the shop UI here. Firstly, I got it working with a scroll bar on the right here. That's why I added these duplicate items here, just so I could test the scrolling. And then I spent quite a while trying to polish up these item capsules. I wanted them to stand out a bit more, so I've added a bit of a shadow behind them, which I think looks quite nice and just generally added a bit more padding, got them all a bit spread out. So I'm pretty happy with how it looks now. I've just quickly implemented some UI for locked items. I'm testing it on these two here. When you click on them, you can't do anything because they're locked. And uh, the lock that I've put on these is a very simple lock. It's just based on the amount of money that you've made and you need to have made over 500 coins in order for these items to be unlocked. So if I just go to the veg store and sell some of these radishes or turnips, then the items are now unlocked. And I'm gonna be doing a lot more work on unlocking content in the game in general very soon. Um, I'm going to add a, a notification system to notify you when items get unlocked. And you'll also be able to click on locked items to see why they're locked. But as I said, that's going to be for another update. So I've had a go at trying to create the shop graphic that I was talking about earlier uh, to make the UI look a little bit more shop-like. So I created a quick model for that in Blender, took a picture of it and then positioned it in the UI. So let me know what you think of that, whether it's better with or without it. And then one other thing that I did in the shops that you can sell items to, if you don't have any items in your inventory, it now shows this little screen here. Also, in other news, you've probably noticed already, but I got a new keyboard because my old one has been a bit broken. It's been registering double key presses for the last month or so, which has been very frustrating when I've been typing. So finally got around to getting a new one and I've gone with a bit of a lighter look this time. I thought it would be nice to have a bit more color on my desk. It is the start of a new week, it's Monday morning. I've just done my weekly planning session and on my to-do list this week is firstly finishing up the entire shops update. There's only one thing left to do there and that is there's a new shop that I want to add to the town area. Then I'm also going to be putting out a devlog video at the end of this week, so I've got quite a lot of editing to do in the next few days. And also someone's just notified me about a bug in Aquilinox, my previous game, so I'm going to have to try and fix that this week as well. But first up, I'm going to implement the new shop. Mm -hmm. 
So I've just started the process of adding the new shop into the game, which is going to be this shop here. This is going to be a second hand shop and you're going to be able to sell any of your items that you don't need anymore for 50% of their original price. And the main reason I wanted to do this is say you've only got 175 coins and you go into a shop and you buy this and then suddenly you realize that you haven't got any money to buy any seeds and you've got no way of making any more money in the game. Um, obviously that could be the end of your game but that's where the second hand shop will come to the rescue because you can then resell that item or any other items that you bought and uh, make some money back so that you can buy some seeds and make some money. I just wanted to show you one thing in the code that I didn't mention when I was doing the backend redo. Um, the way that I indicate which items can be sold to a shop. Previously I had to list out every item one by one but I changed it to a condition based approach so I can provide conditions and then any items that meet those conditions can be sold to that shop. So for the second hand shop you can sell any item to it except for any produce and medals because those should be sold to another shop for full price and I've also excluded plant matter. I just didn't think that should be able to be sold. Um, and here you can see this is where I've set the price to 50%. Just taking a quick break from the shop stuff to work on this Equilinox bug that someone emailed me about. They were having trouble getting the game to run. They're just getting a, a black screen, nothing's rendering. So I've been trying to fix that, but it's quite difficult because I can't actually test it myself because it works on all of my computers. So what I've been doing is I've just been simplifying the rendering code and then sending them test versions and they've been very kindly helping me out and testing it on their computer and so far nothing that I've done has made a difference so this latest version I've simplified it all the way down to just rendering basic rectangles I just want to get anything rendering on their computer and then hopefully I'll have a working base to build up from but I'll send that to them now and we'll see if it works I spent the rest of the afternoon today working on the model for the second hand shop and just generally I've been experimenting a bit with different building styles because I'm still not 100% set on what the buildings in the town should look like. I ended up redoing all of the buildings in this area here because I wanted to see how they'd all look if they had this type of roof, this kind of wooden roof, as opposed to the tile roof that I have in the rest of the town. Um, yeah, let me know what you think, which one you prefer. And here's the, the second hand shop now in the game with the new model. And that all works as expected. So that's the shop's update done for now. I'm pretty happy with how it's gone. We've got a couple of new features supported in the shops, the categories and the locked items. The UI is looking a lot nicer now. I've also made quite a few important changes in the code, made it easier to add items to shops and also made things easier for mod support in the future. And of course the town now has the new second hand shop where you can sell any items that you don't need anymore. Before I finish, I want to say a massive thank you to the top Patreon supporters from last month, who were Marcus Rechel, Viechtu, Daryl Zuniger, Kevin Shaw, Peter Westhazen, Ingo Moore, Henning K.O., Helson Tavares, Andrew Romans, Marais, Shadeless Fox, Kimo Tamio, Coda the Tyler, Ross from Two Minute Tabletop, Nikat Asgazada, Zaniel Ambakar, Atomic Code, Walden Yan, Chris Naismith, Alan Nance, Wonuff, Dieter Reinert, Harry Chung, John Needham, Christoph Herpo, Matthias Bader, Hagen Vingard, Matthew Connaughton, Miggy Doze, Marek Mikolajczyk, Sean McCrory, Caffeine Coda, Timothy Gibbons, Alexander Chavez, and Neil Blakey Milner. So a massive thank you to you guys, and of course, to everyone else supporting me over on Patreon. For this week though, that is it. Say so thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you all again next time.